Welcome to Unique Edo Story. In our series of interview with experts, we share learnings and deeper understanding of the knowledge of specialists for our audience. The information shared by them is in many different contexts and helps manage various parents, parenting challenges faced by us during the upbringing of our children and in these ever-changing times. The intention for these interviews is to provide children and their parents with more ideas for career paths, parenting issues, and the learnings from these high achieving individuals leads to fulfilled living. Mm -hmm. Our experts do not answer questions hypothetically, but relate their answers to similar real life experiences. We assume that such conversations will have positively motivating effect on us. Today, we have with us an eminent personality, Sandeep Nath, who can be best defined as inner power, energy, and mindful coach. After his IIT, IM education, Sandeep went to live in the Himalayas to learn how ancient energy wisdom awakens our inner power. He is also a Reiki master, a Qigong instructor, and a Tibetan Buddhist, a soft-spoken person with global experience presenting in 46 different cities. He has addressed in 35 different national, uh, nationalities, sorry, uh, speaking three different languages. Um, Sandeep Nath has worked with thousands of individuals across four continents. An inspirational speaker, Sandeep dives deep delivering talks, engaging clients with trainings, workshops, and consulting. Sandeep Nath delivers energizing sessions on leadership, productivity, and staying healthy in the workplace. His stress management talks shows how we could reverse our stress. Winner of many international awards, he has delighted governments, NGOs, multinationals, and growth platforms with his talks, and we find him grounded to his core. He brings ancient oriental wisdom to simplify today's business challenges too. He says, COVID-19 was a dress rehearsal. Are you ready for the real attack? How COVID made you stronger? According to him, your inner power generates your outer reality. In his amazing wisdom, he says, life is always complicated as you want it to be. His advice for us, do not minimize your mind by your words. Wow, such deep meaning. Also that at any time you have to make a choice, choose the options that brings joy. Wow, you have made life so simple by giving us such a simple option as this. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Author of two books, Arrive at Success and Renewal. He is passionate about raising human consciousness. He believes that the world is mere 30 habits away from renewal, as documented in his book, Renewal. This book was conceived by him, Guru Pranachandra who is manifestation of energy that channeled through Sandeep's mind. Wow. If I continue to describe about him, the interview would not begin. <laughs> and we will be deprived of the golden nuggets of information to be shared by him. 
Unique Edo Story is extremely excited to be in conversation with such an amazing idealist who is working to the betterment of the universe. Bring to us a better world by being mindful and aware of what we eat and how much we consume so that we have a chance to renew our world and be prepared for the future. Welcome, Sandeep Nath, to Unique Edu Story Platform. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. That is, that is so wonderful. I, two, three times I thought, okay, let's start. Let's start. And then you said, if I continue, <laughs> never start. And you're so right. <laughs> Great. It happens so. So that when we are describing about you, sir, so the, the, the qualities and the achievements never end. So we just have to keep speaking, speaking about you. And that is so really needed for the, as the information to the audience. Uh, the audience will be delighted to know more about you. So let's know what is inner power. And how can children tap inner power and make it useful for them? Great, great question to start with because inner power is um, the two words that I use to describe myself as an inner power coach. And um, is also something which I discovered after all my IIT, I am working this, that. Finally, when I went to the Himalayas, like you said, that's where this knowledge and the importance of this knowledge began for me. And I'm so happy to be starting this talk with, uh, with explaining what that is. So <clears throat> let's get straight to it. You know, what, what we don't understand normally as we live our lives is that we live at three levels. We do understand that we live at the body level. We're very obsessed with our body, right? So our body goes to school, our body goes to eat, our body goes to play. There's also the mind level. Now, yes, thing, of course, there's a mind level. We feed our mind, we learn, we cram, we uh, apply logic sometimes. You know, we, we make strategies, we do all those sort of things with our mind. But the third level, now you'll agree, body, very familiar. Mind, little aware, yes, it's there. <clears throat> sometimes mind is happy, sometimes mind is sad, all those sort of things. But the third level we're least aware, and that is the level of energy, spirit, body, mind, spirit. So spirit or energy is what uh, drives us actually. So if we think that the body is that big and the mind is smaller and the spirit is smallest, in terms of impact on our lives, the spirit is the biggest, then the mind, and then the body. So the body is so small, it is so, it's just there where you are. But your mind can be in Pluto right now. And your spirit can be anywhere in the universe. So that's, that's, that's the connection that we have with everything and everybody through consciousness. Okay. Now, inner power is about understanding that we have these three and they're all three inside us and then using them together in alignment. Sometimes our spirit is down. We are low on energy and still we have to do things. Do you think we can do those things efficiently? No, oh, no, obviously. We have to think things through, but we are... Uh, uh, you know, let's say recovering from, let's say, COVID. So the, the energy is so low that you can't think about anything anymore. So what's lacking is not the presence of energy around us or of things around us, but what's inside us, the core. That, developing that and using the energy to fuel all of that is uh, what each one of us is capable of. And you ask specifically about children. You see, the earlier that we realize that each one of us is capable, I realized when I was like 40 years old, yeah, that is too, 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 too late in life. I knew it when I was four years old. You knew it when you were four years old. We are all pure bundles of energy. 
but then with our conditioning and with what we are taught and what we grow up to think and believe we limit ourselves so my my goal here is to get everybody who's listening and watching to understand that we must reconnect with this in a power bring ourselves in alignment and then we will be able to uh be everything that we are capable of being <laughs> so is there a way where we can tap this in our power like what are the you know for a layman like me or a child uh, maybe uh, younger to me there would be like uh, they wouldn't know how to tap this power then how would uh, how would your advice be or your recommendations that how to tap this power or any tips where we can actually go ahead right so let's understand the 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 power once again uh and then automatically you will uh, see how how we can tap it i'll give you the analogy of a cell phone all right today everybody got a cell phone all kids have cell phones also right yep. there, there is yours <laughs> so now the cell phone has a hardware right the hardware is the 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 screen and the jack and the audio play right and then maybe you have a speaker now that's an external hardware so when you connect your jack from inside to the speaker then suddenly whatever is playing on your phone starts playing all over the room right so the body which is the hardware is connected with the body's outside right now that that's the speaker is like uh, madhu and uh, the cell phone is like sandeep and sandeep and madhu have a handshake and we are uh, we are connected physically our relationships our social interactions all that happens because the body connects now there is also a software all those apps that you have right so many apps you have. that's like the mind there's so many of them it's all everywhere all over the place and you really don't know what to do with it in fact so many times the apps crash and then you don't know what to do Oh, don't tell me about it. <laughs> you know, it's like that's that's like the mind, and the mind is connected to the cloud, the Google Play or the iCloud or whatever that is, right? And we we keep interacting with other people's minds, which are outside of us. Right? Now, if your software does not work properly, your hardware could be. the most expensive hardware you ever could possibly buy but uh, it's useless yes right and now the third level is what powers this thing remember i was telling you energy powers everything so what powers it is the electricity right now, if your battery runs out then what do you do you charge it so what you want to do is again inside is the battery but outside is the charging point and the electricity and the hydro uh, electric station or uh, solar power station or wherever the energy is coming from right and that drives the spirit and if that spirit is there then the hardware and software are capable of working otherwise there's no difference between that cell phone and uh, a little rock right so <clears throat> how do we power our inner power by understanding that we have these interactions within with the world outside you cannot be just by yourself and powering yourself you got to get the uh, uh, the body level exchange the mind level exchange and the spirit level exchange to be uh, getting your power right so that works out in your social interactions in your work and career and uh, whatever you do with your mind to you know earn money assuming of course you're not a manual laborer right but usually for uh, students i'm saying for your work and career and those kind of focuses that you have right and emotionally how you connect is the energy so uh, your your emotional uh, interactions with people people charge you up they actually do and people also discharge you so knowing that knowing how your own charges are 
and uh, what is it that you you work alongside best you know how do you get those uh, bffs because the vibe is always the same the energy is always the same what is vibe vibe is vibration right so you're always vibrating energetically with people and you're always getting that uh, that energy back knowing that you get the inputs that work for you in your work that you do in the interactions that you have and in the emotions that you uh, generate around you that's understanding yourself and therefore understanding how to power yourself right so you heard the uh, plays a major part when we take a pause and then we analyze the whole each day after every a uh, few hours we take a pause and we analyze ourselves and even that plays a important role in uh, charging up our inner power is it exactly madhu that is what mindfulness is about it's about being aware and having your mind on what it is that i am doing is this helping is it not if i'm spending time with a game for example what is it that i am doing with that is it giving me a kind of social interaction or is it giving me uh, some challenge in the mind you know i mean it need not be a game where you're going around killing people it could be a game like uh, uh, where you're working word puzzles or something like that right or uh, is it just feeling good like I, i'm uh, game is an excuse to just chat around with my friends and watch my uh, spirits go up you know feel happy so if you're not aware of why you're doing what you're doing <laughs> then you you are likely to get out of your inner power and your inner power gets out of alignment and you don't know where you're going with it but if so you a little aware, self talk is needed right this is what you self, said self awareness self awareness why, why am i doing this how is this working for me it may work differently for your friend it may work differently for you because each one of us have a different vibration vibration okay great so do we need some meditation uh, here of to be in alignment and everything so what is meditation according to you and you have even some given some message uh, to the world uh, what is that message in your book which you have given about meditation <laughs> right so that, that, that's very good because again for uh, children and parents to understand the word meditation at this stage is very important uh because people are so often very confused about it and then uh, they go to some gurus ashrams or uh, some meditation teachers and they 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 feel that it's too difficult it's, there's too much to do there's uh, there's too many thoughts that i have how do i find the time to sit by myself this and that well the good news is none of that is meditation okay hmm. nothing nothing that you probably have heard of till today is really what meditation is about meditation is a three word definition how many words three words three words okay being in awareness oh being in awareness That's wow it. what do you be in awareness of now when you go to those meditation institutes and all that you will find that they make you sit they give you a certain posture which is a recommended posture to be able to meditate well and they say that you breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out right that's usually how people start now what are you actually doing you're actually being in awareness of your breath yes why your breath because you always have your breath you know you may not have your cell phone also but you will have your breath <laughs> so if you can cell phone be... has become next to breath now for <laughs> yeah. people of course competition <laughs> <laughs> yeah but fortunately we we know this from thousands and thousands of years that we always have a breath and if we don't have a breath then we're dead so we're not we're not doing anything anymore anyway 
So starting with being in awareness of your breath is so important and so beautiful because it again works us at all three levels. When you breathe in well, what do you take in? Oxygen. Right? Oxygen is the reason why we live. Right? We don't live on nitrogen or carbon dioxide or any other gas in the atmosphere, only on oxygen. So when you breathe in well, you take in more oxygen, which gives your cells physical bodily strength. Absolutely. Right? Again, when you are breathing uh, or when you are meditating, when you are being in awareness of anything. Now, why I say anything is because I'll come to the, the, the thing that I talk about in renewal uh, in a bit. But being in awareness of, let's say, washing the dishes or being in the awareness of uh, solving mathematical problems or being in awareness of, uh, you know, whatever it could be, uh, writing an essay. Yeah. When you're writing the essay, you're writing the essay. You are not at that point thinking about the mathematical problem. When you're washing the dishes, you're washing the dishes. You're not thinking about cutting the vegetables. Right. And so many people will catch themselves of uh, doing that, you know, that uh, they, they wash a few dishes and then they, take, uh, they suddenly find that, oh, oh, I remember it's only 15 minutes to dinner. Let me cut the vegetables and they go back to washing dishes and they, uh, there's something on the fire. And then finally, every child, whatever was on the fire gets burnt also. Absolutely. Multitasking and multitasking. messing with everything. But that is not being in awareness. That is being in confusion. And confusion is not going to get us results. So the practice of meditation is a great mind training because it trains the mind to single task, focus. and with that, you are able to, again, be your most efficient, productive best. Oh. And the third level, sorry, yeah. That, uh, my next question was something related to tasks. And I feel that you are answering that also simultaneously. So just please go ahead and then I ask you the question now then. Well, let me, let me just complete the third level of spirit because when you do meditate on your breath, when you do focus on the breathing, we do it so uh, so rarely that we're doing nothing except just watching the air going in, filling the belly and pushing the belly down and bringing the air out. That's all. Breathe in from the nose. Breathe out from the nose or the mouth or both. What happens is just when you do this three, four times, you will feel a sense of calm. In fact, for those of you who did it with me just now, I did it three times, maybe you would have felt that calm in these just these three times while we are chatting. And I tell you this, if you are facing a difficult uh, problem in the school or um, at work or wherever, and you just sit yourself down and give yourself the permission to breathe three times deeply. Deeply, why? Because the oxygen will really go in. Right? So deep means five seconds in. And five seconds out. Two, three, four, five. Like that. Three times means 10 seconds each, 30 seconds. Take that 30 second break and you will feel so much more relaxed, so much more calmer, even the answer to that maths problem may come to you Absolutely. because you have moved all those uh, energies which were blocking. Oh, amazing. This is something nice for the kids and even for me, maybe. It's <laughs> for everybody <laughs> actually, anybody who breathes. <laughs> we must learn to breathe from now on. I mean, we are just, you know, not doing some things uh, consciously. We aren't aware of them. We must start becoming more conscious, more aware of our breath. Everybody is hearing uh, the same things, but then we are not actually doing it. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. That's a very good point you brought up there. The reason we're not doing it is because they have not become habits. 
You see, we have been told to have a bath when we were little kids. And for the next 50 years, we were going on having baths. Right? Why? Because bathing became a habit. Having breakfast at a certain time became a habit. Some people change that habit. Okay. Some people I know say that, okay, I'm not going to have breakfast anymore or whatever. But unless something becomes a habit, it doesn't get done all the time. So what I was saying about uh, renewal, which uh, you were asking about, you know, how does, how does meditation feature in this and in renewing ourselves at the body, mind, spirit level is because renewal is all about creating those habits. And uh, big, a big habit for meditation is something called qi gang, which is meditation in movement. So meditation you in movement. Qigong okay. is meditation in movement. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to be sitting on a cushion. You don't have to be fighting with your thoughts. You can be chopping your vegetables in movement and being in awareness. That's like a Qigong practice. Okay. So just making a habit of doing this, bringing body, mind, spirit aligned, you know, doing that once a day so that your body, mind, spirit get into that uh, into the habit of coming into alignment every day. They then stay in it. Ek bar was set ho jata hai, so it stays set, right? So that's then it'll be set even when you are doing your maths problem. It'll be set even when you're writing your essays. You will be just a lot more efficient because you have created the habit using a qigong practice, a meditation and movement. To without wasting any time, you don't feel like you're sitting and you're wasting time because there's nothing happening. You are moving, you're doing your stuff, but at the same time, you're creating your habit. Wow, that's amazing! We need to learn more from you. We certainly need to learn more of this from you. Then, Avi, Jesse, you just said, ki How should we prioritize our tasks in life and make more achievements. This is what you were just trying to say that uh, doing meditation or uh, simultaneously you were saying something and then you just said Ki, here we learn to prioritize our tasks. Yeah. Not multitasking and when then we learn to prioritize our tasks. What was that? And somewhere in uh, your talks I heard this quote do flying fish have walking shoes? <laughs> I did not get that. Please explain and elaborate that whole thing. Yes, it was brother, quite so intriguing nice. to know do flying fish have walking shoes? Amazing. <laughs> Please then elaborate yeah. on this too. So, I will ask that question again. Do flying fish have walking shoes? They fly. They are fish. They are in water. Maybe they walk also, no? Who knows? The purpose of this line is just because it's so vivid. Somewhere like in Madhu's case, it might just get into your head and stick in your head. And if it does, just remember that the line by itself is a nice funny line. The keys that the line holds are in the first words, in the first alphabets of each word. Do is D, flying fish, FF, have H, W, walking, and S, shoes, D, F, F, H, W, S. This, friends, is what I have discovered as the priorities of living life, which have been practiced by all, all without exception, successful people. And I'm talking about successful people like in the business arenas, be it uh, Narayan Murthy, Azim Premji, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, uh, any of those people, or successful people who have great responsibility and aura, like be it Sadhguru or uh, Sri Sri or uh, Dalai Lama or Mahatma Gandhi or Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, anybody. Now you might wonder. What does Gandhi, for example, have to do with uh, Bill Gates? <laughs> Absolutely. 
Exactly. <laughs> Why do flying fish question. have walking shoes? What a big yeah. question mark. What is the similarity between <laughs> So, you know, all successful people understand that, like you said, Madhu, multitasking is not getting us anywhere. Uh, I, I'm not going to elaborate on that line. I'm just throwing that line at all of us. It, take it from me. Multitasking is not the way that we are designed for uh, our optimum output, right? We, we know that from uh, ancient oriental wisdom. Zen monks practice that, and uh, the the consciousness that grows when you are able to train the mind and align the power of body, mind, spirit, which doesn't happen if it's scattered all over the place. That power is uh, what we tap into. Having said that, what is it that we must learn to do and understand is that whatever we have to do we must follow a certain level of priorities and there are five priorities. And the five priorities are in this order, not necessarily in the amount of time that you spend on them, but in the significance that you attach to them that your day is not gonna pass without the first, second, third, fourth, fifth being checked off in that order, right? So the first one is D. Do flying fish, right? D. And D is your connection with divinity, with whatever you call divinity. I call it divine energy. My mother calls it Hanuman. Somebody might call it Krishna Allah or Krishna or Jesus or whatever. Okay. Somebody might call it a book. Somebody might call it a living guru, right? The point is that that is an embodiment of divine energy. So when I say about Qigong, which is your connection with energy in your meditative state, meditation and movement, the word Qi itself means life force energy. That's Mandarin. Uh, the, the word Qi, Q-I, means it's the basic energy that everything is made of, all life force. And Gang means to work with. So working with life force energy is actually Qigong. Okay. And working with it mindfully uh, in awareness is where it becomes a meditation and movement. Then you know how you're moving those energies. So connecting with divinity, with divine energy, whatever your definition of divinity is, for Gandhi, it was that song, Raghupati Raga Raja Ram. That would be playing. Then he would start his day to that. Right? right. That would be the vibrating undercurrent of the ashram. Right? This is what we need to understand. That it doesn't matter whether it's playing for five minutes. I do my Qigong practice for 20 minutes. That's it in the whole day, right? But not more than that. My mother finishes off the Hanuman Chalisa in six minutes, right? That's it. Once, one reading, it's done. But that connection is established, right? That connection gives you the power to bring up everything else. And what is everything else? The second is F and F. Friends and family. Your inner circle, your priority to your inner circle is paramount. Once you've done your connection with the higher power, then it's this that's going to power you. So do not take friends and family lightly, especially the ones who've decided, you've decided are in your inner circle and the circle can keep changing. But as the circle stands, unless there is any reason to change it, that's your highest priority. Because like so many books uh, have said and uh, so many uh, caregivers in uh, terminal stages uh, have recorded that nobody on their deathbed ever thinks that they should have spent more time at work or doing anything else. They just say, I wish I'd spent more time with my family, with my friends. Remember the body connection the physical connection, the emotional connection, that's powering you. And you, you, you got to have that give and take to get those energies and give those energies at that level. So that's a high priority. The third is the H. What makes your heart happy? Heart. Okay. So many people think of that as, you know, what you're passionate about, what you would do 
if nobody paid you for it. So going back to Gandhi, because he's such an example of absolutely everything, what made his heart happy was fighting injustice. Right. It was way more important for him to raise his uh, objections to the station master uh, and get slapped and beaten for it than it was to you know uh, go back to his uh, legal practice and uh, come back with a lawsuit and say dikhlenge you know and stuff like that no no animosity you do what you have to do in those five minutes get bashed whatever has to happen but you make your point over there right so that's whatever you, i mean you don't have to fight injustice you can be uh, maybe playing the guitar makes your heart happy so play the guitar don't stop playing the guitar because you have so much of uh, geography homework to do. Oh. Okay. <laughs> do it for five minutes, do it for 10 minutes. The rest of the eight hours is for W, work. Work, okay. But work has its own place because work you will do with very, very low efficiency if you haven't powered yourself till then. If work becomes the highest priority as it does for so many parents, Friends, I'm sorry to say you are just fooling yourself, thinking that you're working very hard, you are pressing the accelerator to do the best for your family, and you're pressing the brake at the same time. And your whole vehicle is making this T sound which you can't hear because all vehicles around us are making the same T sound. And we think, yeah, oh, that's normal. With the gadi chala with the chinki awas to aayi. There's some gadis which just move on with the accelerator. And those are the ones that go far, like Bill Gates, like Gandhi, like Mother Teresa. You want kids to go far? Get these priorities. And the last of them is S, which is our social, social media, social interaction. So for example, the next time that you have uh, a social interaction to go to, uh, let's say it is your uh, uh, some distant uh, cousin's uh, granddaughter's uh, engagement party. All right, certainly not near in a circle. And your kid has to be picked up from school or they have a song recital, just to recite it, not even a show. But it means a lot to the kid. You're not going to send the maid there because the kid is in your F and F. And the rest is S. And maybe 20 years later, you realize that that little act of yours had so much of a role to play in your kid's self-esteem that it was only because he felt that his mother or father was backing him or her up that he got into some Ivy League school or whatever happened 20 years later. But nothing would happen with that engagement party <laughs> at that level. Absolutely amazing. I mean, the analogy is also amazing and it is the word, the sentence is uh, worth remembering and is going to intrigue our uh, minds whenever we speak and then we it will keep reminding us of all that DFFHWS. <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much for this uh, insight. So, how do I express my gratitude? What is gratitude according to you? <laughs> <laughs> and how would you practice and receive results? It's, it's a beautiful question. I hope we're coming towards the end. <laughs> it sounds oh, like hopefully, yes. What is the time? Question, but... No, no. That's okay. Uh, you see, because gratitude, again, uh, Madhu, I love the questions that you, you're bringing out. The, these, each of these points, meditation, mindfulness, priorities, uh, each one of these things and gratitude is are our basic, basic building blocks of our good human life. And the earlier we can think of these as they reside within us, the earlier we have the true power that we play with. So <clears throat> gratitude is about acknowledging. That's about it. it. It is about acknowledging. It starts right there. Acknowledging what? That we are gifted just to be here. 
if I do not acknowledge that, uh, you know, we are having this uh, interaction, if I think that, oh, I'm uh, author and coach and speaker and all that, and yeah, Madhu has to ask his questions, let's see, you know, if I'm not grateful to Madhu the way I am, then I probably would not have uh, an interview in the first place, right? So gratefulness is acknowledging that, wow, there is this whole set of parents and kids that Madhu has put together over the last so many years who may benefit from a message from me. Thank you so much, Madhu, for bringing me on this program where I can share something I know and maybe it'll make a difference or add to somebody's thinking. The gratitude is about acknowledging that I have been chosen. I'm not entitled to be there. I have been chosen. Not even so much by you as by the energies of all those that you serve. Right? It's not your decision. It's just that you felt that the people that I serve, the parents, the children, they could probably, uh, if I ask Sandeep this question on gratitude, he might give us a perspective that will help us understand how to be grateful. And so let me, let me give you two things about being grateful. One is about having very low benchmarks, expectations. If I have a high expectation that I would be grateful when I get my car or when I get my house or when I pass, right? Then I don't have any ground on which I am standing and being grateful. I'm, you know, without a ground of being gratitude, I am like, there's no way I can jump from here to here. With a ground, I can jump. Absolutely. Right? So I want this car, or I want to pass, or I want something, but if I'm not grateful for the fact that I'm already here with something, which is a result of a lot of things having happened, a lot, a lot of things having, having happened, I would not have even have been here. I can be grateful for a lot of things here. Then- Everything I, we are here for. Each and everything, every little thing, yeah. But if this ground we don't acknowledge, we are not grateful for the ground, then we are not getting there. We are just, uh, you know, in, in the air and then like cartoon, go down, <laughs> down the cliff. So, um, lower your expectations. You can be grateful for everything, right? Like when you get out of bed in the morning, you, you don't have to think that I will be grateful if I get a good breakfast. No, no, no. You be grateful for the fact that you opened your eyes. That need not have happened. Be grateful for the fact that you could sit up on the bed. You could have opened your eyes and you may not have been able to sit up on the bed. Be grateful that you could sit up and put your feet down. And stand on your feet. Oh, voila, that's a miracle. And it happened to you this morning. And if it happens tomorrow morning, be damn grateful. Very grateful. Hopelessly grateful. And then you could walk all the way to the bathroom and pick up a toothbrush and apply a toothpaste and be able to move and to be able to have teeth. You see, there is so much to be grateful for before that breakfast. Because if you didn't have those teeth, trust you, trust me, you will not be having that breakfast. <laughs> no, 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 no. You'll probably be having a, a drip or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Explaining in such beautiful details. In fact, everybody knows this, but then this is hilarious. <laughs> Very nice. Second thing, always look at how you can flip your mental state from things happening to you, you know, something happened to me, 
two things happening for you. The same thing, instead of happening to me and making me a victim, it can happen for me and make me a victor. Okay, so uh, that's again. I, I want this explained in an example uh, to be more clear. Please. Again, this book it calls it the G two four switch. G for gratitude, two four. Instead of something happening to, it happens for. So I'll I'll uh, tell you the story about this uh, king in ancient times. Little uh, province he was ruling over, and he had this minister who was incredibly positive. You know those kind of people who are really everything is perfect. Like wow. So one day the king was cleaning his sword, and he cut his finger and the thumb. You know, and uh, he screamed, "Ow!" Oh! And the minister was just outside uh, his room and he says, uh, what happened? So the minister, uh, the king said that I cut my finger and he said, oh, that's wonderful, my lord. And the king was so annoyed with him. He said, get out of here. I don't want to see your face ever again in my kingdom. So the minister says, that's wonderful, my lord. And he turned around and he left. And the king was so angry, he could have killed somebody that day. So he got onto his horse and dug, 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 off to the forest he went. And since he usually goes to the forest with all his uh, entourage, today there was nobody, he got lost. And uh, when he was just looking around uh, what to do, he found uh, some people approaching and he waved out to them and he said, they happily came towards him. And uh, he tried to start talking to them. And the next thing he knew is that they tied his hands, they tied his legs, and he was on a pole. And they were carrying him to burn in their sacrificial fire. <laughs> so they were cannibals. So the king said, oh my God, where have I come? What's happened? And then they took him to the, the chief. And the chief said, ah, blood, blood, blood. No, 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 no. Not, not pure, not pure. Send him back. And the king somehow found his horse and got back and got back to the kingdom and he was so relieved and he said, call that minister. He was right. This was so good. If this had not happened, I would be dead. And the minister came and says, I'm sorry, I understand. That was wonderful. You were right. But just tell me one thing. When I threw you out of the kingdom, then again, you said that was wonderful, my lord. What is so great about that? You lost your job. If this had not happened, you would have been, uh, you know, nobody would have ever given you a job ever again. Uh, your wife and kids would have like starved. So the man said, the minister he said, yes, my lord, but if you had not thrown me out, then the next time we would have gone hunting, I would have gone with you and nothing wrong with me. So they would have sacrificed me. <laughs> Mind-blowing story. Wow. Amazing. So you can be grateful before something becomes uh, evident that it, you can be grateful. You know, it's like uh, the minister would have probably said the phrase blessing in disguise. You're right? You're throwing me out of the kingdom was a blessing in disguise. You're getting cut was a blessing in disguise. Why is it in disguise? Because we always think that we are victimized. This happened to me. How can this happen to me? How can my finger get cut? How can I lose my job? I, I am the finest minister and the most positive man on this planet. And I get thrown out. It's happening to me. But no. If it's happening for me, I will not figure out how it's happening for me yet. But if it's happening for me, it's a blessing. And if I bring that blessing in fast forward in real time now, then instead of the blessing being in disguise, the blessing is now I am always blessed. Whatever happens, I'm blessed. Why? Because I'm grateful. Wow. Amazing. You know, this is something triggering my mind how uh, in the past incidents I am now just connecting the dots. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. So we, I think we must, we are coming to the end of this interview. Do I have n number of questions for you and for that i will surely request you to come again
to answer those questions. I'm extremely sorry, just because of the time I have to end this uh, and we could actually go on and on for the interview. But then uh, please, I request you again for such beautiful insights and mind-blowing uh, information for us uh, and my our students. I think uh, you, I, we would request you to come again with the answers for the okay. questions we put forward <laughs> <laughs> and maybe this time we will keep it live i am sure so we can come down to this rapid five questions which i hope you just of course you have everything on your uh, tip of your tongue so uh, you would be answered right there <laughs> three words to describe you Clear, clarity, that's, that's um, clutter free. You know, while, while the mind can be clear, the body and around me, I like to keep that clutter free. And calm, calm at the spirit level, very calm. The three C's, great. <laughs> Travel or study? Travel. <clears throat> because, you know, travel itself is a study. And uh, I have traveled a lot, like you said, uh, we, we've done more than 35 countries and spoken in more than 46 cities. Every time that you travel, you, you study people, cultures. You, you keep your mind open for the origins of things and how things work. And no book can ever teach you that. So travel itself is a study. And investing in that kind of a study, travel, it really opens the mind up to make you more uh, of a people's person, to make you more, maybe not a people's person, like I'm not a people's person, I would be an introvert uh, by nature, but relatable to people. So then you know how to make things work at your workplace, at your school, because ultimately everything is driven by people, right? Absolutely. And now the more global we get, the more important it is to understand how people are different and yet the same and uh, what what they might value more because of their culture their thought processes so definitely travel wow and the top thing on your mind would be then the top thing on my mind is right now what is the next question <laughs> 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 you know because there's no point in being in the future or being in the past. So you just be in the now. And when you ask me a question like that, I'm just thinking, okay, what now? <laughs> What's next? What's happening? So my next question is um, the thing which I actually read about you was that you have done IIT and I am, and still you went to the Himalayas. So what would you recommend IIT, IIM or any other degree? Great question. And the short answer, neither. You know, uh, you can get any degree because a degree is just going to make you conform with what everybody else has. But what you going to really do with what everybody or you have is uh, how you apply that with your with your self study with like we're talking about travel being a study you know so when uh, if you if you look at so many people on uh, youtube these days who are uh, just travelers gourmets bloggers right earning a lot more money and living a lot more satisfying life than so many people who are working in consulting companies or it companies or working 9 to 5 or whatever because they have chosen not to conform each one of us has great potential within let's let's not bucket that potential into a particular degree or a label rather use that degree or uh, study to uh, to give us a background of experiences that we can then build on you know, study philosophy it's beautiful because you get a background about consciousness. 
one that I so miserably lack, even though I work in consciousness, I often feel that if I had studied philosophy, and I might still, uh, I, I would really understand how they thought about it 2,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, when uh, all those people uh, started with their uh, written philosophical pursuits. Right? There's a lot more philosophy before that, which has gone unwritten. So that's what study does for us. If you just study to get a job, you will just conform and be mediocre. Absolutely. So the one last question would be, what would be one the one message for our students? I think I just gave that message away. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> right. <conform>. right. <laughs> yes. No, yes. truly, because, um, uh, you know, the students, there are so many pressures that you have. And a lot of those pressures are not what you deserve. It's not that we want to give you those pressures. It's just that we have trapped ourselves into thinking that there is so little, that there is, when there is little, there is competition. Everybody's fighting for the same thing. But all you have to do is renew your thinking around it. And that's what renewal is about. Renewal is about getting to think differently, think new again, that it is not scarce. We don't have to fight each other. There is abundance. And the route to tap abundance is through energy, which we know so little about. So we're just starting. All of science, medical science, all of uh, construction, engineering, blah, 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 is so physical. There's a little which is mental like philosophy. There's nothing energetic except what, you know, the, the Vedas and the Tibetan Lamas and the Taoists and the Zen masters know. If we can start tapping from there, there is so much. Tap into that. So I understand from your entire description that what we have not yet even touched is your book, The Renewal. <laughs> so next time, please promise us that you will tell us more about this book and its application in our lives. Please I'm promise us that, that you will come I'm back to, to us and no, no, no. tell us all about it. I'm going to do better than that right now, not next time. I'm going to urge each one of us who's still listening in to hop across to renewalism.com go to the page of the book and download a PDF absolutely free. Read it and then let's have an interactive discussion about it. That will be the next episode. I will see that even in my classes, I will tell each of my students to do so. Okay. And then of course, we will actually sit around you and ask questions relevant. That'll be so, so terrific. Thank you so much. Absolutely. This was the most amazing interview with Unique Adu Story and an expert like you. I am amazed and, you know, awed at that entire information we've received. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sandeepji. And looking for more of such interactions and, you know, all that knowledge to be absorbed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your questions and all of you. Thanks a lot.